Welcome everyone, welcome back. Happy to have you here. Today we're gonna to be discussing really how to buy solar panels, looking at our different options in the marketplace today, looking at current you know, interest rates, what it looks like to acquire solar panels. And we have an actual case study that Maureen is going to present to us today where hopefully this will help you decide, make that decision easier for you so you can evaluate all the different options that are on the table and choose the one that makes the most sense for you. And knowing when a certain option is more appealing in a certain environment under a certain situation versus say an another option, right? So it might be fluid where it's not a one and done, like always do cash, you know, always pay cash for everything. That may not be the case as it relates to solar panels. Same with always finance, right? And maybe it's not always the, the smartest thing to do to finance solar panels. You know, if you don't plan on say being in the home that you're currently living in for very long. So a lot of different aspects that we'd like to present to you today and then giving you action steps such as booking a call with Maureen to discuss those options where it is completely fully open, honest, and transparent, and you are able to feel comfortable. Uh, you can be able to trust someone that is gonna look at your situation, look at the actual amount of, of panels you actually need. They're not gonna oversell or undersell you on solar panels on your, your journey to acquire that for your property. So with that being said, I'd like to pass it over to you, Maury, thank you for coming back on the channel here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I just noticed your shirt, <laughs> run the numbers, because it's so true. That's what I tell people every time when I meet with them. I said, you know, it's not it's not a one size fits all, it's case by case, because people always say, well, how much is it gonna cost? And I said, I just need a little more information to help you first. I need to know how much electricity you use, you know, so looking at the bill, because even two homes that are identical in a subdivision, or maybe there's only a few, four, uh, floor plans or models, they could be identical right next door to each other and need a completely different size system because they use a different amount of electricity. One could have snowbirds in it that are only there half the year, only two people, relatively low use, and the other one could have a family of five that homeschool and parents work from home. So it really has nothing to do with the size of the house. It has everything to do with how much electricity and shade. So I always tell people, look, all I can do is design a system and the numbers are either going to work or they're not going to. We just need to run the numbers. <laughs> so here it's perfect. Yeah. So just running the numbers. Um, and so do you want me to share my screen right now and go through the Sure. We can dive right studies? into it. You already know my, my audience loves the details, loves the numbers. So they're like, give it to me straight so that mm -hmm. I can help, you know, make this, make this decision. Because this is a big decision. It's a big financial move, especially if you're paying cash, considering to pay cash or if you're considering financing, what that would look like in terms of monthly payment, interest rate, the longevity of that. Um, so yes, let's let's dive right into it. Yeah, so a little bit of context for this one. So this is actually a project I have in the works right now. We are waiting for permits. Once permits are complete, we will schedule installation date. So contracts were signed a few months ago and the whole project start to finish unless there's um, a delay with HOAs. Usually they're the biggest hang up but some are really easy. So this was an easy one. If there's no hangups, it's three to four months from contract signing to inspection and permission to operate. And permits are anywhere from three to eight weeks, depending on the city. So that's usually what the, the holdup is. So we're in the permitting process right now. So it's very exciting and they're excited to install, but it did take about uh, seven months with this family for us to go through different numbers. They originally had signed and then we canceled those contracts. They were gonna do financing, but the husband was laid off. And so they put a pause on it because they wanted to make sure they were making the right financial decisions. Right. He was able to get a job again a couple months later and they've been looking into solar for a while. They've had four different quotes over the last few years and it was just one project they knew they really wanted to do. But you know, it's a very serious, thing. It's a huge project. It's probably the second or third biggest project you may ever consider doing on your home, short of maybe a huge add-on or a giant renovation or kitchen remodel. Right. And so it's something that you should really feel comfortable about doing and not 
not do on a whim or with pressure from a salesperson. Do your research, know all of your options and what's right for the person that lives in your neighborhood or your friend that got solar might not be the best thing for you. How I like to explain all the options is kind of like going to a car dealership. So the size of the system and the system design is always going to be the same. So like if you were to come hop on a Zoom with me or another solar consultant, um, they would design a system with the panels and inverters, batteries, whatever you wanted that was exactly specific for your needs and home. But once the system design, now we can talk about, which is what we'll do with the, this, this case study, is how do you acquire that system? So now the system's not going to change. It's like when I got a new Kia for my 40th birthday last year. I know I just dated myself. <laughs> I knew I wanted this Kia Sportage. Uh -huh. And I actually had every intention of going in there and purchasing it to own it and finance it. I didn't have the $30,000 cash to drop on it. Um, and I've only ever owned cars outright in my life before. I used to always buy used cars and would own them. I'd never leased a vehicle before. But if you've ever gone to a car dealership, you know that you can walk out of the car dealership with cash, owning the car outright. You can secure your own financing from somewhere and give the dealership cash. So you're still financing, but in terms of the dealership, they don't have the title, someone else does. You can use in-house financing to own it, or you could do in-house leasing. Either way, you're leaving with the same vehicle. So I want everyone to have that lens when they think of the solar option. So the solar system is the system. In terms of, you know, you were saying about three to four months is from, from contract signing or from mm -hmm. start of conversation to um, permission to operate, right? Yeah. And roughly how long does it take to actually install solar panels on, on average? What would you say the, the length of that is? Um, for smaller projects, it can be done in a single day oh, okay. system right. with 12 to 15 panels for bigger projects, especially in Florida. We have some pretty big projects just because we use so much electricity mm -hmm. here a year round and stuff. I'd say average two days. Sometimes installations can take three days. Gosh. And then of course, Fairly construction quick. Yeah. really quick. That's the shortest yeah. part of the whole, Got it. the whole four month deal. Yeah. So I always tell people. You know, I, I let them know ahead of time, okay, permits, we'll do, we'll work with the HOA, we'll work with the designing all tangentially and get it going, the interconnection agreement with the utility company while we're in that holding phase for the permit. So that by the time we get the permit back from the city, everything else that we need for the project is ready to go. And then all we need to do is put an installation date on the calendar. And then it's pretty quick, and especially in Florida which is what this case study is, unless of course there's a hurricane or something. But a lot of times in other parts of the country, when we're dealing with ice storms and winter and heavy snow and crazy weather, it's, it's construction. So there's a lot of um, out of our control, potential delays just being in the industry that we're in. But if nothing happens out of the scope of work, one to three days for installation. Beautiful. All right. Let's dive right into this on the, on their case study. So I'm excited. Yeah. So this is, again, this is the solar design. It ended up being this, this is a virtual potential model of what it is. So after site survey and we put boots on the ground, there might be some shifting in panels based on fire codes, but it's just a, an idea to see, okay, this home is going to require 56 panels to produce as much electricity as they need. And you can see this is a fairly large system. It's not out of the norm for homes this size in Florida, but relative to homes this size in the US, because we run on electricity year round, a lot of people have heated pools, we tend to use a lot more electricity twice as much than let's say a house this size that's in the Northeast that's doesn't have the heat that we have year round and they're on gas heat half the year. So again, knowing if you're looking at this, you don't live in Florida, it's not to say that you have a home that's three to 4,000 square feet, you're gonna need 56 panels. This is a larger system because they use almost 32,000 kilowatt hours of electricity every year. So you can see the reason that I designed it the size that I did is because the estimated yearly production you see on the bottom left corner of the photo is around 32,208 kilowatts. 
So went through the design with the, the homeowners. We moved panels around from one side to the left based on their preferred aesthetics, which side they wanted to be able to see the panels from on the street versus not, making sure that we're capitalizing on those east and south facing slopes when possible versus the north to get more sunlight. That's not stuff that you have to worry about, but we were able to get all the panels we need on the roof with still plenty of space to spare. So that was great. And then you can see here on this chart, this is what's really cool. It shows on a monthly basis, I can take this from their bill and put in how much electricity they were using each month. And then our software system based on 25 years of historical weather data for the zip code and the type of panels and inverter system pulls together the estimated production each month that the panels are going to produce. And so this is what we call almost a net zero one to one net metering where the amount of energy that the panels produce over the year is pretty much equal to what they are going to be using. Sometimes people will throw a couple extra panels on and have 110% offset if they know they're going to get an electric vehicle in the next couple of years or there's something that they might be doing an add on installing a pool, a hot tub. So we want to make sure we're sizing the system for what they're going to be using in the near future, even if they're not using all that now. And every city's different. Some allow oversized systems built. Some utility companies don't. So a solar consultant that knows your area really well can help guide you through all that. But these are the type of questions they sh that you should consider and know you need to know what type of roof you have. How new is it? Is it going to need to be redone soon? Um, are you going to be doing anything? Do you want an EV charger? All that stuff. So make sure that you are getting the exact system that you want with the sizing. So now that we know the system, this is where we thought, okay, what's financially in their best interest, right? They have the cash. She's actually a financial advisor. So she's very smart with money and knew that not only was this something they wanted to do for going green and sustainability, but the numbers really had to make sense. And not only did the numbers had to make sense, what was the, the best financial decision for them. So I put together these for my clients. And I, again, your community will love this because it's all about the numbers. Sometimes this overwhelms people, but this is the perfect audience for that. So you can see right here, the cash price of that project. Again, this is a very large project, not the average size solar system. It's $72,824 if they were to pay cash. And then there's some financing options, which I didn't include on here because we decided not to go with financing after I showed them some basic numbers. I can show you right here some loans I had access to. You can see even the, the lowest loan payment with how high that interest rate is. It was going to be $605 a month for them to finance. And the lease options were almost half of that. So sometimes I'll put a loan one on here. But this right here is if they stayed with the utility company, we're seeing the utility prices increase on average conservatively and across the country 4% a year. And I would say that that's very conservative because if you live where Denzel and I live, it's increased 60% in the last three years. We were paying 10 cents a kilowatt. Now we're paying 16 cents a kilowatt. But let's just say over the next 25 years, we're only looking at a 4% increase for the cost of electricity. Their current average electric bill is $520 a month. So assuming a 4% annual increase over the next 25 years, if they don't do anything and they just stay with their utility company, they're going to be paying a quarter of a million dollars on electricity. And you can see cash system if they could afford to go cash. So they're already going to be saving a significant amount of money. But a lot of people don't have the money to drop cash. And it's not always the smartest choice, right? Because if you're doing velocity banking, if you're you might have a place where you can put that money, where it's making money, it's working for you. And so it's actually not in your best interest to take all of that and put it into a solar system. So with the leases, how the leases work is there's a third party owner. This is what we call third party owner. And someone else owns the system. In this case, Sonova is the company that we use for third party ownership. They purchase the system for cash and then the homeowner makes them monthly payments. So you can see if they did this 0% escalator, meaning over the next 25 years, their payment is never going to be more than $377.64 every month to Sonova. So you can see that Sonova is making 
over $40,000 on the transaction, right? So that's how it works for them. And the homeowner is still saving more than half of what they would be paying to the utility company. The other, they ended up going, this homeowner ended up going with a 2.9 escalator. What that means is the payments start off lower, 328, which is very appealing, especially for people who are all about saving more in the beginning as they continue to increase their cash flow and income. And it's going to increase at a steady 2.9% every year. So you know what your payments are going to be. It's still increasing less than the utility. You can see total lifetime payments is more than the 0%, but still significantly less than what they would be paying with the utility company. And so she actually looked at this and thought, wow, it's not until year 12 that the 2.9% actually becomes more expensive for us than the 0%. So they ended up going with this option for their family also because they're not totally sure that they're going to be in this home for the next 25 years. They have kids that are um, preteens. And so they believe they'll be in the home until the kids go away to college. And then after that, they might want to downsize or travel or move. And so how it works with leases is it's just a simple transfer over to the new homeowner as long as the new homeowner has above a 650 credit score, which more than likely they would if they qualified to buy the home. And it's very easy. Um, another benefit of a lease is you don't have to add it to your homeowner insurance policy because you don't own the system. So Sonova is the one that pays to, to insure it. They're the ones that have to fix it if anything happens to it. God, and so, so there's no extra just to yeah. uh, provide more clarity on that. So my homeowner's insurance won't increase um, with, a, with a lease option versus if you pay cash, that's also another thing to consider that your homeowner's insurance may go up because you mm -hmm. are you essentially have to insure your own system because you are the owner of, those, of the solar yeah. panel. So again, cash may not always make sense because in this example, this family here already has, like you said, young teenagers or preteens. By the time we hit, say, year 10 of, of having the solar panels, they're going to be grown, maybe going off to college, leaving the home. So that means less energy use. And who knows, maybe their home is paid off by then, right? And mm -hmm. maybe they're, like you said, they may want to downsize. They may want to travel. They may want to just sell the property and go upgrade, go into something else. So there's a lot to consider there. And it's like, all right, well, in the short term, do I really want to uh, depart with that much capital, 70 grand, and then also potentially have a higher homeowner's insurance expense? And as you know, living in South Florida, right, uh, our, our homeowner's insurance has uh, skyrocketed. As you said, electricity has skyrocketed in, in, in Florida. Uh, cost of electricity has gone up tremendously but also our homeowner's yeah. insurance due to the recent really storms that has hit really the west side of Florida and the South Florida area. Like there's been some major um, insurance companies that I think went bankrupt. So that really Lots caused- the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot to keep in mind. It's not just the solar panels. You may also have an increased expense on the homeowner's insurance. I don't know what that could be. I don't know if you could speak to what that potentially would look like, but that's something, another decision making process that your current client went through. You're like, oh, we think we might finance. Then it's like, oh, maybe not, you know, and you having that patience, right? You, this is about a seven month, you know, communication with a prospect. You're not getting paid during those seven months. So you've got this patience to really allow that person to make that decision rather than let me get my paycheck. Let me, you know, try to get them in these in these panels by selling them on the idea of, hey, you know, rates may go up, you know, so you want to lock it in now, da, 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 right? And use these sales tactics. That that wasn't your your move. Yeah, I I I just I probably would have a lot more money in my bank account if I felt comfortable operating that way. I've taken so many sales classes and the emotional and the pride cost of goods could go up, and I just. I don't want to run my business that way. And I know you don't operate that way either, which is why we get along and watching this. So, um, and all that may be true and it may not be true. Uh, sometimes I wonder if, you know, I've really not done people service by not creating a little bit more emotional um, urgency around it. 
but I never want people to feel pressured. That's why I love your shirt. I always just think, okay, if I can just do my job at explaining the facts as I understand them and helping them feel empowered to make the decision that works for them and knowing there's a lot of different options, especially, and they're different in every state, every utility company. I do think there is urgency because we never know what's gonna happen with the policy. Like we're really lucky in places in the Northeast and in Florida where the utility companies still offer net metering. Like if anyone looked at the news in California last year, if people didn't have solar installed before April 15th of 2023, they were not grandfathered into a net metering policy. And so the utility companies now make it very financially difficult for people to uh, save money going solar, which is 95% of people's primary driver in going solar. When I first started working in this industry, I thought, oh, there's gonna be so many people that wanna go green and save the planet and are all about sustainability. And I think people feel good about that being a nice icing on the cake. But I've I've realized about 95% people, percent of people just want to save money. And so that, with... And knowing that there's politics behind this that can influence mm -hmm. how much people save money. So that being, uh, sharing with people that urgency is letting them know, yeah, you know, there's this going on, there's this going on, there's this going on. But at the end of the day, how is your personal household economy operating? And let's yeah. make sure we're not making a decision solely based on the potential of what a future thing may may be and then it doesn't yeah. come to pass right and then now you're stuck with the bill and we got our commissions and you know we're on to the next client so just understanding that as well like we want to be an advocate for the customers for the audience for the people watching this video considering solar panels mm -hmm. hey let's make sure we're just running the numbers, taking that extra step where yeah. it's maybe 50-50 emotional and logical coming together to help us make that best decision. Yeah. And I think that's another reason I like the Lisa so much recently too, is because I feel it is something that we can really control and know there's not this volatility with it. Whereas, you know, if someone, if we can make the leasing numbers really financially make sense for someone and they know, okay, because they can see in the contract, I know what my payments are going to be, even with the 2.9% escalator. I know what my payments are gonna be every year for the next 25 years. So you can plan for it, you can budget it. Um, and it goes and up like 2.9% each year or what's the- Yeah, okay. with the 2.9% escalator. But you know, I'm, I'm probably supporting someone signing a contract actually tonight in Pennsylvania. I went through all the numbers with them yesterday and I think they decided for their family, the 0% escalator makes sense. So it's a little bit more upfront, but it's never going to change. I think their payment's like $174. Yeah. And I the love the example here, just kind of going back to it, how you're, you can show here in year 12 is when the 2.9% actually starts to become more expensive. So right. based on that, if you plan on, you know, these would be the scenarios where it's going to be more advantageous to go with a 2.9% escalator A you plan on moving within the next 12 years in this example, right? You have children that will be moving out. So your electricity costs would, would go down. So that's another interesting part here is what happens when the, the system is not being used as much as it relates to consumption when people move out of the house. Does that mean that the bill would go down? No, because you're paying oh. for the system. So remember the yes. analogy gotcha, will go gotcha. back so let's say I'm driving my Kia now. I've got a bunch of kids. I'm running them around to soccer games and practice. So I'm putting 2,000 miles a month on the car. Mm -hmm. But in five years, they're away at school. I'm only putting 500 miles a month on the car. I still have to pay my same monthly payment for owning the vehicle or leasing the vehicle. Right. I still have so to pay the same insurance on the vehicle that doesn't change regardless of how right. much or little so, you in the car. Okay. Understood. The, the thing that could be interesting though, is depending on the utility company where people live, there are some utility companies where you're racking up credits for all the extra production that your system is producing that that's going back into the grid that you're not using. Some actually do uh, pay yeah. out at the end of the year based mm -hmm. on the current market of that. So, it's not as common as it used to be. Usually utility companies just rack up credits like back in the, remember the rollover cell phone minutes days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
just could roll over. And so a lot of utility companies will do that. You can just continue to rack up credit. So let's say you have so you wouldn't 5, have a bill. Kilowatt. You wouldn't have a bill and it'll it'll cover the connection fee. So you'll never have to pay anything for the utility company. And then let's say in the event of, uh, you know, three years in the future, you've got a very, very hot season or something crazy happens where um, you're using way more electricity or you have a lot of people come and stay for the holidays, a family reunion, something. So you have three times as much electricity usage for a couple months, but you have so many credits racked up. So that's the nice thing about being able to oversize the system slightly. But no, you won't ever if you're in some sort of loan or lease agreement, that will never change regardless of your production. Gotcha. Or okay, usage. So, perfect. So coming back to um, this case study here, this example uh, showing just recapping, they're going with the 2.9% Excel escalator, which simply means every single year the bill goes up by 2.9%, starting at 328.42. And then by year 12 yep. is when it actually starts to become more expensive than the fixed payment of a 0% escalator starting at 377.64 a month. Guys. Yes, yeah, exactly. Awesome. So what else do we would we like to share with the audience here just regarding this case study um, that is important? Yeah, I think for, you know, just in terms of the visual, so I put together that graph on the right. I mean, you can see to me why solar, if you have the right roof for it and you live in an area with a utility company that does offer net metering, it is such a no brainer, whether it's cash, 0%, 2.9%, or even if we had a loan in there, it would still be significantly underneath that top orange line, which represents the utility company. So kind of no matter what we decided was best for this family, they were going to be spending significantly less going solar than staying with the utility company and paying over a quarter million in the next 25 years for electricity. So whether it's cash, financing, using a HELOC, uh, doing a lease, if leases are offered, leases also are not offered in every area too. So Nova doesn't do leases in every state or utility company. So again, it's so case by case, but that's what you really want to do. Sit down with someone that can explain it to you, run the numbers, know what all your options are, because even though no matter what they decided, they would be saving a lot of money, you can still see how many options there were within that to make sure, okay, well, these are all better than staying with the utility company, but let's find the best of the best custom for your specific household family needs and, and future. So I would just want people to, yeah, I think we did a great job explaining how much variety is available and it's not a one size fits all. And I want people to feel empowered and know the right questions to consider and then ask the solar consultant. Yeah, I really, really like this uh, Google Sheet, this Google Doc you put together. That is super helpful for people watching this right now. They're like, oh, wow, you know, it's boom, got 72. We got 377 a month, 328. I'm currently paying 520. So I'm saving like almost $200 by going with the 2.9% accelerated that that cash flow recapture think of where that money could be saved or invested you know if we if we were to run an example you know what would be super cool i think would be especially your client being a financial advisor they probably did this themselves but doing mm -hmm. the 520 minusing you know from the 328 and seeing what that cash flow uh recovery is and then saying okay since that's money we were already it was already leaving our economy we weren't even accounting for those dollars what if we pretended as if we didn't get that increase and we simply sent that and invested it right either invested in your Roth IRA and your HSA your self-directed accounts your retirement accounts your cash value life insurance policy your own business wherever and let's just say we're gonna you know let's say you invest in the S&P and you're gonna you know, average whatever it averages we should put something together over like that same 20 25 year period as to what that would what that would look like right and yeah. then to say hey maybe there's a, a a world where the amount of money that you paid more instead of going with the cash option, right? It was 72 versus 140 something, right? So it was like 
41,815.17 versus the 72,824. So I'll we'll do some math real quick and minus from those two numbers. So that's a 68,991. 03 difference, right? If we were to look at, okay, how much money would be saved over the life of that 2.9% escalator? We could also do it on the 0% one and then evaluate investing that money compounded over 20, 25 years. Would that equal or get somewhat close to 68 grand, right? Then on top of that, we have to also factor in homeowner's insurance not increasing what what that potential savings looks like right and then knowing that hey the 72 grand that i would have deployed my my roi is the 68000 that i'm quote unquote saving right but the opportunity costs that you lose by deploying your 72000 instead of just paying 300 and $77 or $328, right? Where could have that 71 grand gone? Where could that be deployed and invested? And if we were to, you know, a true apples to apples comparison, you definitely make the argument that the 0% or the 2.9 would, would dramatically be a much better ROI short term and long term, right? And, and it's solved for the same thing. It's the same system. It's not like you're buying a more expensive system with a lease versus mm -hmm. a cash. And kind of back to the example, if you're going to buy this car and you're deciding, do I lease it? Do I finance it? Do I buy cash? It's the same price all, all three ways. Granted, maybe with the right. cash option, you get some sort of a discount potentially. Right. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, when we compare a cash solar system to a financing solar system, the the um, price of the system is the same, but there is a dealer. Mm -hmm. fee, right. There's like a dealer fee that gets tacked on on top of the interest rate when you finance. Right. That's in house. Yeah. For the for the financing company. Yes, they but, add a dealer fee, lease, so but not for a lease. There's not no for fees, there's no money out of pocket. It's just whatever the monthly payment is. That's all I'm in for. Yeah. So like with the with how financing, so like our our company is always going to take the seven. There, we're not adding any dealer fees, but the the financing companies. So whether it's uh, Good Leap or Sunlight Financial, all that stuff. A lot of people get excited. They get starry eyed when they see oh a four point four nine percent, and I said yeah, but look at the loan amount. So the loan amount is like one hundred and ten thousand dollars for this seventy two thousand project. They're only paying us $72,000 to do the project. So they're keeping that money off the top. And then in addition to that, it's 4.49% interest rate over time. So if someone, let's say, had a windfall of cash, inheritance, something, and they're like, oh, I just want to pay my loan off because there's no prepayment penalty on any of these, but you're responsible for paying the loan amount. So it's not like you can just go three years later and say, okay, I have the 72 grand in cash. I'm going to pay it off. No, your project is 110 grand cuz that's yeah. the loan amount. So that it's it, I don't know why the solar industry does this with these dealer fees, but all of these there's five major companies at least that I'm aware of that we have access to, but access to like 150 different financing options anywhere from 7 to 25 year, but all these lowest interest rate ones have up to 38% dealer fees in in front. So there are some cases with 11.99 percent interest or 11.49 where there's almost no dealer fee it's only like two or three percent so i've done that with some people where it's almost like a cash job because right. it's let's say two thousand dollar project is really only a seventy four thousand dollar loan so i say if you want a little bit of leeway a couple years you want to wait for that tax credit to hit that you get when you own it if you're looking for um, getting 30% of it back on your W-2 or less money you owe for 1099. That is something we could probably do a whole separate conversation about when is purchasing still financially better than leasing if the 30% tax credit is really going to benefit someone if they own right. their own business or they paid right. a lot out in W-2s. Yeah. So, so with the, the lease, 
there's no tax credit, correct? The, since they don't own the system, the owner of the solar system is yep. the one that gets the tax credit and Got any it. other, so Sonova gets the tax credit because they own the system. Yeah. But that's one of the reasons that Sonova is able to have the monthly payments be so low. less. Mm -hmm. So it still is kind of a win, win, win. They're still making money over time oh, yeah. on the interest. We're not worried um, about Sonova, they're banking on yeah the they're making money i can they're already run the math. math i'm like oh my god yeah that's a seventy thousand yeah. dollar system minus 30 percent and you know it's it's a business operation the deductions that they get it just they're banking on it so i'm not even worried about them but for the for the person that's looking to acquire solar just to recap only on the cash and financing options do you get the tax credit on the lease you don't the benefit of that lower payment right you can fix you can have that payment fixed or steadily increase over a long period of time for a lower payment out the gate yeah. and with the lease the other benefit there is your homeowner's insurance will not increase now if yeah. homeowner's insurance increases just because of it increases that's another thing but mm -hmm. your panels your solar panel system won't influence that increase right so that's something to be aware yeah. of then when we look at when you finance there are dealer fees and you don't want to get tricked by low interest rate because the interest rate the lower it is the higher the dealer fee and the higher mm -hmm. the interest rate the lower the dealer fee so if you get a if you get a much higher interest rate this is mm -hmm. in-house financing by the way if you do that then you're getting much much closer to the cash price now i wonder can you see this maybe you can share this i okay. created this spreadsheet yeah let's do let's do, do this and then i was just going to mention about like this is where velocity banking becomes very attractive for those that are like i want to buy cash but i don't like the in-house financing options mm -hmm. we could leverage a HELOC, a PLOC, a uh, cash value life insurance policy, right? That we could leverage here and pay up, maybe pay a higher rate, but don't have to worry about dealer fees. And then we just pay cash, right? Out of our yeah. debt tool and then self-finance it ourselves. That might, that might be way more efficient than financing in-house. So those are things to be, um, things to consider. And talking with Maureen and myself on that, would be very, very advantageous for you guys to consider. So go ahead. What do we explain yeah. what we're looking at here now? So this is a spreadsheet that you can see the back end of what I see with all of these financing options. So again, look at this 4.49% APR from Goodleap. Yeah. Look at the dealer fee on it. 38.49%. Wow. It's crazy. So, so I always tell people don't look at right? So let's say on 72,000 they're tacking on another 38%. Yep. So 72,000 times 38%, that's another 27,000 on your 72. So yeah, you're paying a hundred grand for a solar system. That's just wild. Exactly. We could have crazy. So what, that. I, I would take a, yeah. I, I would take a 15%, you know, interest rate mm -hmm. for to, to, to remove that 38% fee, because I know by doing velocity banking, I could take my 15% simple interest line, let's say, and not to say that we should go and get a 15% HELOC when there's much better options out there where I can get, you know, a seven, a six, a five, an eight, you know, but this is just me being, you know, very like, hey, you're gonna get a much better deal leveraging mm -hmm. your HELOC, let's say, or your own financing to yeah. cover the price of that than going through in-house and doing this deal, right? And if you're gonna do in-house, you're gonna have a much better um, time, a better experience with, a higher interest rate. And then we could just do velocity banking and do chunks, right? Mm -hmm. Where we can say, okay, maybe I don't have the whole 70K, but I have a $30,000 PLOC at 10%. Let me go and get that. I think I saw 11.99 was one of the highest rates on there. Let me get yeah. the 11.99 for a very, very small dealer fee and then do chunks of say 10K or 15K chunks. And now we're, 
uh, eliminating the 11.99 amortize over 25 years. And instead of paying 10% on the P-lock, we're paying more like five, right? If we're doing velocity banking properly. So that's huge. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I love all my little spreadsheets. <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Well, we, we dove real deep into this action steps here for everyone watching my, my clients, my lower subscribers and new people that you just found this video because you were searching for solar and you want to get educated. The next action step is to click the link below where you can book a call with Maureen. You'll see that in the comment sections in the descriptions below and in the, in the chat itself, get on a call with Maureen, even if you aren't ready just yet for solar panels, but you want to get educated, Maureen's going to provide that education. Also check out our playlist where, where it's titled velocity banking and solar panels, where we, you know, are going to keep adding more and more case studies across the United States. We're both located in South Florida, so we may have more South Florida cases that we're you know, illustrating, but we're gonna be providing more and more in different states as to when this makes sense. So we'll do a cash case study, we'll do a finance, we'll do lease, we'll do it all, right? To help you make that best decision. Anything else you'd like to share, Maureen? No, that's it. I'm excited to talk to everyone. I love this stuff. I love geeking out on this stuff. So no question is too small. Um, I would love to hear from you guys and know if there's any way I can support. So it's a big decision, whether it's myself or someone else, hopefully you feel empowered after watching this today and have a, a better idea of things to start looking for and considering. It's a big decision, but it's an exciting one when it works. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. And also for those that are watching, comment below what you would like to see up any particular case study. If you have been presented something by a solar consultant, you want to verify it. That's another thing that you could do with Maureen and even myself, we can run those numbers, see, hey, does this make sense? Or are we getting, you know, duped here? Are we getting, uh, you know, marketing tricks going on? You know, what? Get, let's get all the facts in front of us. So with that being said, thank you for tuning in. God bless. Have a wonderful day. And we'll be talking soon. Thank you. Bye.